In today's video, we're going to look at reasons why the government arrests preppers, and we'll also answer how to keep yourself from being one of those people who get arrested, right after the channel intro. Remember, only you can ensure you and your family's survival. Live your life with honor and integrity, and always be the wolf hunter, don't be the sheep, and never be the wolf. Welcome. I'm an avid prepper, an oath keeper, and I'm certified to teach the use of deadly force. If you want to learn actual prepping skills and how to protect yourself legally, then please subscribe and also click the bell icon so you won't miss whenever a video is released. We're in this together, so welcome to this community. So most of us have heard the story that pretty much went viral in the prepping community about the guy in Colorado who was arrested for collecting rainwater on his property. And we'll talk more about that story in just a minute, but most of us have also heard other preppers say, if the government finds out that you're stockpiling food or ammo, then they're going to arrest you, and other things like that. So let's see if we can answer the question, is the government actually looking to make prepping illegal so they can later round all of us preppers up? So first, let's take a very simplified look at what the government's role is. So over the past hundreds or thousands of years, as people banded into communities, and as they began sharing resources, they formed governments to oversee that these shared resources would be kept protected and kept working. So now that our societies have developed into communities and also developed governments, the general consensus is that if the government fails, then society fails. So government doesn't want to fail, the government will try to ensure its self-survival. And then we also have to remember that there are different levels of government, all the way from the federal government down to the state and city and town levels, and even down to the neighborhood associations that oversee issues that affect their neighborhoods. Now before anybody screams at me down in the comments saying that I'm protecting the government, first ask yourself, do you believe that there should be no government at all? Or do you just wish there was a lot less government than what we have now? Because if he answered yes to the latter part, then we probably actually have more in common than you think. So I believe that the reason why government and preppers sometimes clash is because the government's main interests are about the society as a whole, which is a collective mindset and the governments are just not going to care about individuals as much as they will the whole community. Simply put, the government is concerned about the welfare of everybody under its jurisdiction and not just your one household. And preppers generally have a self-sufficient and individualist mindset. So it's just natural that the individualist mindset of the prepper is going to clash at times with the collectivist mindset of the government and the people who like big government. So here's where the tricky and slippery slope comes in. At what point do the rights and wants of one person start to adversely affect the rights of other people? And where do you draw that line? So let's use the story of the man who was arrested for collecting rainwater to try to explain why societies will often make laws to try to balance out an individual's rights to the rights of the rest of the community. Now, I am not saying that I agree with this case, but let's take just a little deeper look at what I believe is a sensationalized headline to spread fear. This guy didn't just have a few rain barrels set up on his property. This guy had somehow collected enough water on his property that he had three dams built to retain that water. And this body or bodies of water were large enough to even have boat docks and stuff like that on them. Also, when the local government found out about these man-made reservoirs on his property, they didn't just come out and arrest him. It was after nearly 10 years of him ignoring warnings and court orders before they actually arrested him. And if I have this correct, the law that this Oregon man actually violated was actually enacted in the 1920s, nearly 100 years ago. So when you read the sensationalized headline saying that this guy was arrested for collecting rainwater, 
Just remember that he had collected enough water that he could actually have boats in his lake or lakes and again, he wasn't arrested until after 10 years of thumbing his nose at the local courts. And the law in his state that he violated was almost 100 years old. Now, personally, I think if a person has a large enough piece of property that if they want to build a lake on it, then they should be able to do it. So we have to ask, why would society make these restrictive laws to begin with? So just to continue to use the example of the guy who had built the dams and reservoirs on his property, we have to ask, did this guy build his private dam strong enough to keep all those thousands or millions of gallons of water from crashing out all at once? And what kind of destruction to life or property could occur to his neighbors if this guy's dams weren't built strong enough and all that water did come gushing out all at once? How would you feel if your house became inhabitable or if you had a child drowned to death because while you believe that you lived in a naturally dry area that thousands and thousands of gallons of water crashed through your property because your neighbor up the road didn't properly construct his man-made reservoirs. Now I must clarify, I have no idea if this guy's man-made reservoirs had the potential to destroy other people's property if they failed. I think that if the guy's reservoirs posed no risk to anybody else, then it was none of the government's business if he had them or not. I'm just using the story as an example that we have to think critically to answer why some societies choose to have their local governments keep people from doing whatever they want to do with their own properties. And this example also shows why most municipalities will require permits for things being built to help ensure that people won't be adversely affected should that structure fail or whatever. But of course we all know that while the intent of construction permits was to protect people, they also get abused by governments just as another way to make money. So with having discussed why laws are many times made, now you have to ask yourself, do you live in an area where the society around you has chosen to have as few laws as possible while still keeping others safe? Or do you live in an area where your society has chosen to go overboard on these types of laws? And I think that you'll find that the more of a populated area that you live in, and the more that the citizens in your area are big government leaning, I think that you're also going to find that your area will have more and more restrictive laws that are better for collectivism rather than being self-sufficient. So here are some things that we have to think about when we hear about laws that we don't like or that we think are aimed at preppers. First we have to consider, does that law affect everybody across the United States or does it only affect people in a region? Because if it's only an area law, then it's not illegal for all preppers across the country to do something like gather rainwater or stockpile ammunition. If it's only in area law, then it just means that it's illegal for people in that area to collect the rainwater or to stockpile the ammunition. And that would be because people in that area elected politicians who made it the law in their area. Now please don't think that I'm being a government apologist in this video because I'm about to rip into the government here shortly. But preppers generally don't get arrested until they start doing illegal stuff, like stockpiling explosives, or especially when there's some kind of a dangerous group that just happens to be preppers also, where they do stuff like stockpile explosives and other illegal items. So if you get arrested, then it's not because you were a prepper, it's because you stockpiled explosives or something along those lines or you stockpiled ammo while it was illegal to do so in your area that chose to elect politicians who pushed for laws like that. Folks, we need to be smarter than the newspapers and learn how to read past the headlines to get a better idea of the actual story. Headlines are vague, and when people read something that's vague, they have a tendency to fill in the missing information with their own imagination. And headlines are also designed to evoke emotion and grab your attention 
so that you click on their news story. So when a person reads only the headline of man sentenced to prison for collecting rainwater and then they don't read the rest of the story, there's just too many people who, because they're filling in the blanks because they don't know the rest of the story, but there's just going to be too many people who will only read that headline and then imagine a guy being handcuffed and dragged away because of a few rain barrels on his property. So as preppers, as people who want to think for ourselves and do what's best for ourselves, we need to remember to not let the media turn us into sheeple, to manipulate us into thinking what they want us to think, to remember to dig deeper and investigate things ourselves, and to think critically of what's being fed to us by outside sources. Now here's the problem with the trends that I see in our government, both local and national. There's more and more people who are voting in the type of politicians who like big government and that have the type of collectivism mindset that the government should provide everything for the people. And these are the same type of politicians who think that they know what's better for us than we do. These are the same politicians who are banning soft drinks and certain types of fats and also doing land grabs and trying to take control of all of our waterways, even down to the small creek that might run through somebody's farm. And these are the same politicians who, while thinking that they're protecting society as a whole and that they know what's best for everybody, but they also think that everybody should be forced to live on the grid and shouldn't be able to have old-fashioned wood-burning stoves because they might pollute the environment. And folks, I'm seeing more and more people wanting to vote these types of politicians into office. A recent poll showed that almost half of our millennials were fine with the idea of having a socialist government. And that just makes me believe that every generation moving forward will be even more receptive on the idea of us having a socialist government. And once the majority of the people are receptive of a totally socialist government, then they'll have enough votes to actually vote in politicians who will get laws enacted that actually dictate everything about our lives, all under the guise of what's supposed to be good for the whole society. And because this government will want to control everything, the food that we eat, the water that we drink, how much fuel we consume, how much of a carbon footprint we leave, this government will want to control everything by making every one of us dependent on it. The government for survival. Now again, this video wasn't to be a government apologist, as I do think that more laws are going to be passed in the future that will conflict with the prepping lifestyle. But I also wanted to warn people about going down the rabbit hole of thinking that the government is coming after them every time they read a news headline that's hyped up to get views and clicks. So now, what's your thoughts on this? Do you think that every state government is actively trying to make prepping and off-grid living illegal just so that they can come after preppers? Or do you think that we have too many voters out there who actually believe the government should provide everything for us? and therefore we're going to end up with laws that conflict with prepping. So let's have some discussion on this in the comment section below and let me know what your thoughts are. Because I think that the ways that preppers get arrested are by violating laws that are only laws in their areas or by violating national laws like possessing explosives or fully automatic weapons. And I think that only certain areas are anti-self-sufficient. And I think that each time we elect politicians that are pro-big government, that more nationwide laws and regulations get passed that encourage dependence on the government and discourage self-reliance. And I also think that the way preppers can keep themselves from getting arrested is by educating themselves on the laws that affect them and their areas. And if they find that they live in an area that's too restrictive on self-sufficiency, then they need to consider moving to somewhere where self-reliance is the norm and they will no longer be the minority in that regard. And if you would like to see an interactive SHTF video story that lets you choose which way you want the story to go, and this story is about a guy and his family who finds themselves living in dangerous times after major terror attacks cause an economic collapse, then click on the video card that should be appearing on the top right hand corner of the screen just about now.
Also, while I enjoy making these videos for pennies on the hour, I am wishing to purchase better video and editing equipment that will allow me to make better quality videos for you all without actually putting me into debt to make the videos. So if you have the disposable income, please consider joining my Patreon video channel where for just $1 a month you'll get early access to videos and also receive special prepper and naturally made gifts from time to time and other exclusive Patreon member rewards when they become available. To help support our community, please subscribe and hit the like button, please comment below, please share this video on social media, and please make sure you have the bell icon hit for notifications of when videos are released. Anyways folks, if you made it this far, hey thank you very much for watching, and I pray that you have a good night.